Well, hello there, humans. Welcome back to another Let's Talk Tanky McTankersons <laughs> episode. I'm Bushka, your host. Call you're on the air. Uh, today, we're going to be having a look at a uh, couple of interesting games. Um, well, mostly, we're going to be having a look at this game in particular. I have to remember that I'm actually getting a video. This is using the markup on iOS. So, we're going to be looking at this game from the perspective of cruising around and uh, blowing people up in our tank and why it's all happening. Now, sorry, I'm in the Amex uh, 1375, uh, 1390. This is the tier eight French light tank. It's a good tank. Uh, it's quite solid, does a lot of good things, and it's very, very tinny tiny. One of the things it's very good at is driving up walls and cliff faces and all that kind of stuff because like all the French lights, uh, it's got a great horsepower to weight ratio and it's very, very quick and that means it can get where you need to go very, very fast. Uh, and you can also talk to the humans in it while you're getting there. Um, most of the time in light tanks, you're gonna see me do stuff like this, okay? Uh, and let's have a quick little look back there uh, at that effort as I roll on up the top of the hill. This is just a, a, a hat tip for everyone. Um, you're going to see this stuff all the time in all my light tank videos and well you should because basically if you're a light tank and that's me in a light tank there and you want to get to that area there so that you can spot over the top of the cap and there's a reason for it you have the ability to move with incredible camouflage and that's great and i'm going to show you why this is all the nasties are down in the corner there generally they'll push up around here you can see that there are a lack of tanks spotted on the map at the moment. So I don't wanna go jump in the A cap anytime soon. That's that cap there. And the reason being that if I go and start capping A, everyone will know where I am. Uh, instead, I'm going to look over the top of that A cap and I'm gonna try and spot all the way down that corner there and just see if there's anyone coming down there. So my team can basically make their move. I'm not gonna to push too hard. One of the things I don't do in a tank of any description really when no one on the map is spotted is push into the team what do i mean by that and we'll finish this little bit here because obviously that's just grist to the mill what do i mean by that well if you don't have spotted tanks and you push forward there's an opportunity for you to run into seven tanks we've all done it before and the reason i don't do it these days is because i don't like getting wrecked <laughs> And I can see now that there's a lot more tanks spotted on the map. And that lets me make an informed decision as to where I move. And I'm counting those tanks on the map. I can see that we're missing one TD. And they're the ones that you're really worried about. And that means no one really is going to be there who can spot me. Let's get this base capped and let's push around and start doing the business. And yo and behold, we are now going to do exactly that. I'm going to reset this cap here at B. Uh, very, very easily because obviously that T-44 is far enough away that I don't need to worry about being spotted after firing. Waste a clip though, moving back around. This is uh, pretty interesting here, what I'm doing now. I'm just looking for that. I'm not looking for the damage. We've got two guys pushing up in the B cap already. They're going to spot that area there. I'm thinking that there is a tank missing still. So I'm going to roll around the back here and try to get involved. And this is one of the reasons I talk about this before. This is really clear here. Hey, uh, if we look at this on the markup, there's a bunch of tanks spotted, but there's also a bunch of tanks unspotted. Now, the RU251 and the T44 are both pushing into that cap. I was trying to reset it from further away. If you're up the top of this map in this section here, um, all these guys here are just going to snipe straight down. Uh, well, that's not very good drawing, Mr. Squiggle. Uh, all these guys here are just looking straight down at that B cap. And there's a reason I was trying to reset that cap without driving up, up there. There's great lines of fire for these guys all the way into there. And none of the tanks in that armor have the armor there to sustain it. And these guys are playing very poorly. The guys at that C cap, they're playing really poorly. It's just that the guys in our team are giving them shots by driving forward. And this is exactly what I was talking about before. There is a time to push and there is a time to 
press an advantage. And, and right now, we have the lead on the cap. And yet, we've really given them an opportunity. And we're doing that because we've put ourselves on the front line with a bunch of very, very softly armored tanks. We don't have, there is the tank I was missing. That's the SU-100M1. I knew he's around there somewhere. I'm always, when I'm in a light tank, I'm always looking at the enemy team's TDs. They're the guys that I'm really interested in seeing. Again, like, let's just stop this for a second. I don't even really need to draw this, do I? There are six red tanks. Every red tank in the game is around the sea cap. Every red tank in the game is around the sea tank, sea cap. We have five tanks. We are up by... 50, 50 points on caps, and we've got two caps. And yet our team is going to push into three heavies and two TDs. They're basically going to give the Reds the game on a silver platter if the Reds are clever enough to take it. And that's what's happening here. You can see uh, absolutely crazy um, team work. Like they, they're pushing for no reason. And this happens, and, and you're going to see, uh, I, I play games like this sometimes, where you're just kind of going through the motions, you might be grinding a mod, uh, you might be trying to get enough um, experience to get to the next level on your crew skills or something, and because of that, you play a little bit haphazardly and you end up regretting it. And our tanks have put themselves in a terrible position here. Uh, I've not been, I don't feel like I've been particularly soft I, I capped A, which was my job. I spotted that flank. There was no one there. I reset B cap. All the stuff I've been doing has been productive. Uh, it's just that, really, everyone's already dead. It's now two on six. I'm going to get this Persian. Oh, no, I'm not, because I'm going to miss that shot. Uh, thankfully, he's going to come back, try and get the shot in, and I had one left in the clip. It's now two on five. Now... Our SP1C is holding back, and he's been doing the same thing I've been doing, but from the other flank, but he's probably stayed a little bit too long. And this guy said good game, which is way too early to be saying that. Uh, he's not being rude either. He said hello at the start. Uh, he knew who I was. G'day. Good to meet you. Good to see you. Um, but we've still got two caps. And I'm going to do the best I can do here, which is defend my caps. I'm going to defend my caps. I'm not going to push back around there. I'm not looking for damage. I'm looking to go in a position where I can defend B cap without really getting hit. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I can see the Yag Panther. And I've got plenty of burst damage in my clip. Uh, and you can see very, very cool shooting there, Bushka. And this is a big mistake from the red guys, hey? Big mistake. And this is why I was saying before, red wasn't playing particularly well. It's just our guys gave them the game on a platter but then this happens look at the caps look at the score on the caps 900 to 670 on and we've got two caps um, our SP1C has bailed just there he's barneying he's out of there all well and good no one is grabbing B cap no one is grabbing B cap the Yag Panther was looking for shots in the SP1C I've set up to defend that B cap, which is perfect. Like I've got, I can shoot across into that cap there, or I can, in a, in a blue fit, run around there and set the cap. But we've got a cap point lead. The last thing I'm going to do is actually push up into these guys. Pushing up into these guys would be the same mistake that our team made when they pushed up into the C area and all got completely deleted. Like they all ran around in here into C and that's how we ended up two tanks against six in the first place and we've been pegging it back ever since and the guys from the uh the red team have made the mistake of chasing that last kill thinking things are in the bag but they really are not in the bag i'm resetting a full load here i've got a full clip ready to go i've got excellent light tank camo so i don't have to worry about getting shot i get to just pull out there i'm not spotted i'm going to try and track him so i can't get around that corner there we go and we finish him and suddenly we're going to win on our cap absolutely easy peasy lemon squeezy and i'm not going to muck around i'm not going to try and get another bit of damage i don't need more damage i don't need more kills i just need the win and that's what we get 
Uh, Kolobinov, very, very cheaty Kolobinov. 2,900 uh, damage there, which is a fair chunk, I think. And pretty freaking cool. Um, and I like games like that. I really do. Because think about your tanking. Beat the guy on the other team with a bit of intelligence and clever play. But if you take one thing away from it, it's just don't give away your hit points for no reason. I really want to show you something here. All right. This section of the game, right here, I am going to get a shot into uh, the side of that tank. All well and good, but that's not the important thing. And this is this is really today's big talking point. That there says 190 meters, and that's that rock over there. So those tanks over there is like 250, 260. Tell me why I need to be. 30 meters away, like this poor old RU-251 is from that T-28, to put damage in. My gun can fire with a, such a small margin of error, but a huge degree of safety from 200 meters away. And they are gonna struggle to hit me from 200 meters away. And yet, all the time we see, and I'm, I'm not pointing fingers at RU or anyone else because I have done this many many times and there are obviously real occasions where you need to get up close and personal but this isn't one of them um i am capable of doing a full reload here going back out and having another shot now the targets are spotted because those guys yolo down but they would also be spotted if they had it pushed up and they would have had to go up the hill where our t43 is now and i still would have been around here uh putting shots in and we would have had the whole enemy team in a pocket we would have won this one on kills inside of a minute from the time that I'm talking to you now, if they had it pushed up here. Don't do from 50 meters away what you can do from 250, is basically today's lesson. Hope you like it. I'm Bushground Blitz. Love your work, look after yourselves. I'm in Vegas, uh, and if I'm not in Vegas, I've just got back from Vegas, um, and hopefully it was good. I hope I did well. Uh, Love your work. Talk to you soon, guys. And until next time, stay safe on the battlefield.